not a great friend, but a friend on a home. And she's um, uh, a wishy-washy buyer, okay? She's on, then she's off, on and off. And um, then I see that another really good friend sent her a post on a house that's available. Mm -hmm. And I sent, you know, and I, I uh, this sounds so juvenile. I, I just feel so bad after I did it. Um, so I just posted beneath it and I'm like, that's adorable. And it is in your list of the multiple listings. Right. And then I sidely text my friend and just let her know. I thought, I, I thought it was kind, but I just said, uh, just so you know, Michelle and I are working together and, um, <clears throat> she's, uh, she's taking a break right now or something, something to that effect, just so she knew I was working with her. And then I felt so bad about it. And she did take offense to it. We're good right now. I, I explained to her that I'm just in a, in, a, in, a, in a wacky way right now. But what do you do or what do other people do in that situ situation? And if anyone ever has been in that situation? Or am I just juvenile and I should just shut up? <laughs> no, I'm, I, I'm not responding because you addressed the question to the group. So I want the group well, to anybody, have an yes. not, Yeah, of course. <laughs> I'd feed her a Xanax. <laughs> Give me a Xanax? <laughs> no, your client. Oh, well, I'm more concerned about my actions because... It'll be fine if she settles down. <laughs> well, my, my issue was how I reacted to my friend who, who, who was being a friend to her by showing her a really cute home that came up again on one of those apartment.coms or, or, or situations. Um, is this person an agent or just a friend? Just a friend, but she, and she could be a potential client, but she's afraid to be hire me also because she doesn't, you know, that friend relationship and business relationship scares her. So that's another obstacle I have to overcome. So yeah, so I, it's just a big a bit of a pickle. I didn't, we don't have to spend more time on it. We don't have a lot of time here. I just didn't know if anybody had any advice and certainly can PM me if you if you want. Well, Lisa, yeah, let me jump. Can I? Let, yep, go for it. Okay, I was just gonna jump in. You know, regardless if the friend, I feel this way. If I have a person, when I call someone a friend, they're a friend. And part of being in relationships is that sometimes we don't act the best way that we want to. And I would reach out to both of them and say, hey, listen, you know, I apologize. I, I think, I don't, I don't like the way that I felt after I reacted and I'm gonna think you may not have. And I just wanna let you know, I'm, I apologize, forgive me. And I, re and I would tell them something that I really appreciate about them because if you feel bad about it, they might also, but you also want to show them that you're human and that you can admit to your errors. And that's really going to make them see you in a whole different light, not just as a person, but as a professional. Yeah. And, and I did that. And thank you. Thank you for that. And I did do that. We're, my, my friend is good. My buyer friend doesn't really even know what happened, but my other friend and I had a good discussion. So we're good. It just, I just didn't know it just bothers me and, and I'm Lisa. becoming territorial because I'm struggling, you know, and I, I just, anyway. Lisa, you know what? Um, and Sarah, that was really amazing. What you just said, I would have just let it go. Yeah. Just because it's a friend, you know, communicating with another friend. Um, exactly. That's what I should have done. It was, it was harmless, but I understand how you felt. We get, yeah. you know, we do get territorial and we do get put on the defense um, unknowingly, <laughs> but, but I think Sarah hit the nail on the head. We are human and we get emotional sometimes. Yeah. And I, that's the other thing I have to learn, take emotion out of it. But anyway, I'm so sorry. It took so much time. So thank you though. You're good. Lisa. You're are, yes? I was just curious how many buyers and sellers are you working with? Question. Well, it, I'm still struggling. Not many sellers are really rough. I'm still in training. Um, I, I can't seem to get anyone to bite. I'm working also in small commercial business, which my, which is part of my uh, goal is to take over in our team, the commercial side. So it's kind of a hybrid of situations. I was just going to say, sometimes the things that you hold on to the tightest are the things you lose. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all great, all great advice, everyone. Okay, John, love take it. it away, please. Love it, and love this group. 
um, and the way that you support one another. Absolutely. Perfect. So guys, we're going to jump right into the 12 week year. And this is uh, the message that I had for you yesterday. Uh, and uh, glad that we have an opportunity to chat about it today. Now, I did tell you earlier in the week that we were going to practice and role play some scripts today as well. And if we have enough time, we will. And if we don't, we'll just pick up tomorrow on that as well. All right. So at the top of page 82, actually, I'm going to go to the bottom of page 81. And the author is talking about crafting your vision. Uh, the first note that I want you to make for, to yourself is my passion is my energy source. Now, here's what the author has to say. The best visions balance your personal and professional lives. So as you're creating this vision of the future, of your ideal future, the future that you deserve, and you deserve it. Don't allow that self-talk to tell you that you don't. Don't allow anybody else to tell you that you don't. Again, read Bruce Wilkinson's The Dream Giver and ignore the dream bullies and find your dream champions. Now, typically your passion comes from your personal vision and passion is the energy source that helps you push through the pain of change and the valley of despair. So the reason this is so important is because you, you, your success in business, that vision you have for your future success in business is going to be fueled. The energy is going to come from your personal vision. And you need a compelling reason why, because if you don't, you're going to give up because it's going to get hard and you're going to be tempted to quit. And he goes on to say at the bottom of the page, it is your personal vision that keeps you in the game. Another great book, Simon Sinek, The Infinite Game. The whole idea behind The Infinite Game is stay in the game, not win the game, stay in the game. It is your personal vision that keeps you in the game when things become difficult. Now, top of page 82. Your vision provides you with the line of sight. Underline that word. Circle it many, many times. There. Circle it many, 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 many times. Your line of sight. Super important. Your vision provides you with a line of sight, an emotional link to help you overcome the challenges and execute. When the task seems too difficult or unpleasant, you can reconnect with your vision. It is this emotional connection that will provide you with the inner strength to forge ahead in spite of any difficulties, in spite of any difficulties. He didn't say most difficulties, he said any difficulties enabling you to achieve your dreams and your desires. So the question that I ask myself or the question that I'm asking you is what happens when we lose our line of sight? Now, when I wrote that question, I immediately went back to something I remember Zig Ziglar saying many years ago. And Zig Ziglar was sharing the story of Florence Chadwick. And this story connects the dots. Now listen to this. In 1952, Florence Chadwick stepped into the waters of the Pacific Ocean off Catalina Island, determined to swim to the shore of mainland California. She'd already been the first woman to swim the Eagles Channel both ways. Now on this particular day, the weather was foggy and chilly. She could hardly see the boats that were accompanying her. Still, she swam for 15 hours. 
Now, for any of you who have participated in a long distance swim, in an Ironman competition, the swim is two and a half miles. She's in the water for 15 hours. When she begged to be taken out of the water, things are gonna get difficult, difficult. Things are gonna get difficult. It's foggy. She can't see the shore. She lost her line of sight. Hmm. When she begged to be taken out of the water along the way, her mother, dream champion, in a boat alongside, told her she was close and that she could make it. You know, I envision that as we are pursuing this vision on this journey with a destination that is assured, and we're traveling on this journey and things get hard, our dream champion, God, is whispering in our ear, keep going. You're almost there. Don't give up. You're almost there. And yet when we lose our line of sight, we don't hear that voice anymore. What we hear is, it isn't going to work. You're swimming in the wrong direction. You're not even swimming towards the coast. You should just give up because you're destined to fail. You should change directions. Real estate agents, this isn't going to work. You should give up. You should go work for another company that's going to allow you to keep more of your commission because that way, at least if you're going to fail, if you're not going to do $5 million in sales, if you're not going to do $10 million in sales, if your destiny is $1 million or $2 million in sales, at least that way you get to keep 100% of your commission. So give up. And we start to hear that voice. I do. I've been on this journey with a destination that is assured here in Coral Springs for five years. And for five years, I've been making, we've been making progress. And we can see the finish line on this journey with a destination that is assured. And then all of a sudden, it got foggy and I couldn't see the destination any longer. And I started listening to those other voices that were saying, maybe you should try something else. Maybe you should get back into production. Maybe there's another opportunity. Maybe this isn't gonna work. And I had a breakthrough. But before I had a breakthrough, I had a major breakdown. And if you're in the Coral Springs Market Center and you were in our team meeting yesterday, you know this story. Now listen to the rest of Florence's story. When she begged to be taken out of the water along the way, her mother in a boat alongside told her she was close, that she could make it. Finally, physically and emotionally exhausted, she stopped swimming and was pulled out. She gave up. She listened to that voice that said, give up. She gave in. <clears throat> it wasn't until she was on the boat that she discovered the shore was less than a half mile away. She was within one half mile of hitting her goal, of completing a journey with a destination that is assured At a news conference the next day, she said, all I could see was the fog. If I, I think if I could have seen the shore, I would have made it. Can you relate to these words? We live our lives in a fog of trouble, worry, doubt, depression, health problems, 
unemployment, financial uncertainty, strained relationships, and loss of loved ones. Now the rest of the story, like Paul Harvey used to say, the following week, she got back in the water and completed the journey with no problem whatsoever. Matter of fact, she went on to do it many, many times. And the only difference was she didn't lose her line of sight. Now, talk to me. What do you hear? Can you relate to this story? Don't give up. Yeah, don't give up. Lisa, that's great. Why? And you don't have to answer it right now, but why? Why shouldn't you give up? Because if you're what if you can't answer that question, you're gonna give up. You just are. Because if you make 18 calls instead of 20 calls. <laughs> oh, happy day. I can relate to that because I think sometimes you get so caught up in like the day to day and then lose the line of sight. Or like what's you know, towards the end of what goal you're working towards because you just get caught up in the busyness and of the current business instead of working on the future business. Amen, girl. Amen. You know, Andy Andrews shares in The Traveler's Gift that David Ponder visits seven historic individuals as he's traveling through time and learning these lessons. And the seventh if you've never read the book, is the jaw dropper when he visits the archangel Gabriel. And he visits a place that never was. Now, this place that never was, if, if, if you ask me, I think this really exists. I think this place is real. And in this place that never was are all the things that never happened. The cure for cancer. There is a formula for curing paralysis. There are all of these incredible inventions that would change the world that don't exist because the person who was born, who was put on this earth to finish the journey gave up right before they did. And do you think that they gave up right before the end because they lost the line of sight only or? For another reason. Yeah, you know, Tara, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure. I really not. I think they, I think hope is so important. Proof of hope is you're still here. See the score, there's nothing less important in life than the score at halftime. Nothing. I can go in to the locker room at halftime down by 21 points. And it doesn't matter because there's still a second half to be played. There's still more life to live, more people's more, more, more to accomplish, more to experience, more joy to have, more joy to give. And the fact that it's halftime is proof of hope. There's still a second half. And I think what happens is we lose that hope. We lose that proof of hope that there's a second half. John, I think also um, when you have not succeeded to the level you want to, it's more difficult to envision being there. Um, I know Steve Harvey says if he lost everything today, he could gain it again because he know what it takes to be successful. 
and being on a call like this and with experienced agents who's been through difficult times to say, I got through it, we got through it, it motivates me who haven't achieved it yet that it can be done. Well, so I just I, have to put in the work what you close out every call with. I have to do the work. I love it. Good job. Yeah, if I, can, if I don't have past victories to, to pull from, then I don't have an experience to go to and say, this time is like that time. I agree, Shirley. I do. But yet I would tell you at the same time, if I'm coaching you, I would ask you, has there ever been a time in your life when you attempt to do, to do something that was really, really hard, but yet you succeeded? Was there ever a time in your life when you thought, oh, I'm never going to get this, and yet you still did? Pull from that, find that experience. You know, one of the things that I use when I'm having this conversation with someone in a coaching conversation, and I was just talking to somebody about this the other day, is how many times does a child have to fall down before they give up and say, that's it, I'm done. I'm going to spend the rest of my life sitting here on the floor. They never do it, that. Never. It yeah. doesn't matter because they don't give up. Right. But they also know, they also know that when they get on their feet and they start moving, they can achieve more and get further places. Uh, they I, don't I, know I, because I, they've I, never. Wayne I, I, Wayne, I love the way you're thinking, but I'm, 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 I'm going to agree with Sandra. I'm not sure they know. I, really? what I, what I think, what I think, what I think happens, Wayne, is they haven't learned to give up yet. Mm -hmm. True. They haven't been negatively beaten down. Life hasn't taught them to give up yet. That's true, but I just watched a two-year-old who learned to, one, to stand up next to a table. She couldn't get around the table to get what she wanted on the other side, so she used the table to walk around to get to the other side to achieve what she wanted to grab hold of and break. So she found another way. You bet. Find a way where there is no way. When, you are, faced, when you are faced with impossible odds, find a way that doesn't exist. You ever watch children play with toys? Mm -hmm. You know, we buy them a, a particular toy that does a particular thing and they do everything with it except that particular thing that the <laughs> toy was designed to do, right? Yep. Because nobody told them that, oh, it's a box. You have to put stuff in the box. No, they get in the box, they get out of the box, they turn the box upside down, they sit on it, right? Because they haven't been taught that particular line of thinking right mm -hmm. or they throw the toy what... away and play with the box yeah they throw the toy but hence hey let's not give them toys this year for christmas let's just wrap boxes up beautifully make them <laughs> difficult to open and it will be the best christmas the best ever. present they ever had yeah so it. What do kids uh, like to do? They play with the pots and pans. What do we do with the pots and pans? No, don't, don't, it, bang, 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 right? So I think we have this learned set of behaviors that we take on as our own thinking. And the issue becomes that because we are so programmed, we forget those things. And one of the reasons I love to watch kids play is because it reminds me of that. And I'm like, okay, let me think. Let me stop using, let me get in the box. Let me turn the box around and sit on it. Let me hug the box rather than just trying to put the square peg in the box. Good stuff. Something else, John, we um, teach children, no. Mm. We don't realize it. Mm. But when we say, no, don't do that, we're teaching them negativity. We're teaching them defeat under that guise of safety. I Love think it. we need to stop that. We have to, like, that was one thing, like, <laughs> think about what your child's first word was or the no. third. <laughs> no, why? We say it all the time, right? Six, and now six. here here, here we all are as adults and it says, and we say, no is not a word that lives in my vocabulary. I reject rejection. But we've taught that to ourselves and to our children and our grandchildren. So maybe we need to flip that script a little and say, 
when we say no is not a word that lives in our vocabulary, what would you say to someone instead of no? Let's try it this way. I like what you're doing and let's try it this way. Yes. Right? Versus no. <laughs> yeah. Or All right. let's play with this. Let's do this instead. So Re I think it's called we redirect. Gotta do exactly. We have to redirect ourselves because there you go. we there get you go. stuck. There you go. Hey, I got a question for you. For the, all of you who believe in being realistic, who have conversations like, that's not realistic. We should, we, listen, one of the questions that I ask when I'm meeting with real estate agents and I, and I meet with an average of 50 real estate agents a month. So that's 600 a year over the last five years. That means I've had 3000 real estate interviews. And one of the questions that I ask every time is where do you want to be a year from now? In other words, what are your goals? And every single one of them respond with, I don't want to be unrealistic. And my response to that is, why not? Why don't you want to be unrealistic? See, here's the thing, guys, for all of you who believe in realistic goals, why don't you do this? Let's get all your kids together next week and let's put them on. Oh, you're going to like this. No, you're not. Let's <laughs> let's let's get them on a Zoom call. I'm serious. All of your five year olds to 18 year olds. Let's put them on a Zoom call with me. And here's how the conversation is going to go. Hey, guys, your mom's and your, your dads, your parents wanted me to get together with you. And they, they wanted me to tell you that you needed to be a little bit more realistic. They wanted me to tell you to set smaller goals, to not to have expectations of living a great life. I, they wanted me to tell you to set a goal of living a mediocre life, of having a mediocre job, of making mediocre money, of having a mediocre marriage, of making, do you want me to have that conversation with your kids? Frankly, John, the way Absolutely I know you, not. Yeah. go ahead, Wayne. I, I don't it. think you could honestly have that call because you're so opposite of that. No, so thank you, Wayne, and I appreciate that. But the I question mean, it's is, like, it's the like question you're struggling to even say that now. Yeah, thank you, Wayne. I appreciate that. And the question is, for all of you who have children, and I'm serious, do you want me to have that conversation with your kids? No, it's not you. Then why are you having it with yourselves? John, it's like that quote, be careful how you are talking to yourself because you are listening. And you're the most important person who talks to you every day. If you go to Active Rain, Active Rain is a site for bloggers and you search hello self. I'll close with this. If you search hello self, you will find a blog that I wrote. I don't know, maybe 12 years ago, maybe 15 years ago. And it's a story. It's a true story. And I've shared it many, many times. So I should be able to share this without being emotional. And there's no promise that it will, that I'll do it this time. <laughs> it's a true story. 1996. Colin is five months old. He was born June 10th, 1996. And I had a dream. Oh, it's clear as day. I mean, I'm one of those people who doesn't always remember their dreams, but I'll never forget this one. And in this dream, I'm walking through the Florida State Fair in Tampa, Florida. Now, at the time, 1996, I was 34 years old. So I'm 34 years old. I'm walking through the Florida State Fair and I'm coming up on this ride and I can remember this ride 
I'm like, oh, wow. I remember that. It's this thing that goes around really, really fast. It goes up and down and really, really fast. And I'm like, I, I remember that. I remember being on that. And there's this little boy who gets off the ride and he's walking towards me. And he's in tears. Because he's scared. Because he lives his life in fear. He's always scared. He's scared of everything. Scared of the dark, scared of the light, scared of his parents, scared of other kids. He gets because he's bullied and all of the other, all of the other, why he's scared doesn't matter. He's scared. And I walk up to this little boy, 34 years old, and I walk up to this little boy and the closer I get, the more I, the more clarity I get. And I realize it's me. It's me as a five-year-old eight-year-old, not sure how old that little boy is, but he's five, eight years old, maybe 10. I don't know. And I get down on my knee and I look at him and I put my arms around him. And I say, it's going to be okay. You don't have to be afraid. You're going to, you're going to live an amazing life. You're going to be successful. You're not going to live the life you live now. You're not going to be neglected, abused, hated. You're going to be surrounded by love and by people who love you. And you're going to have amazing relationships. You're going to get married and have an amazing life. You're going to have children and be an amazing father. You're going to get, have incredible success in, in work and change lives. And you have this incredible future in front of you. You don't have to be afraid. And I'm having a conversation with myself. What to say when you talk to yourself. The most important person that's gonna to talk to you today is you. Be careful what you say. In bold, we learn that people will grow into the conversations we have around them. If you're gonna have conversations with yourself, have conversations of greatness. Whether you're living in greatness or not, you'll grow into that conversation. All right, you guys are being really quiet. Love it. Time to get to work. <laughs> What's work? That's a dope story. It's work is 20 conversations. It's not 17. It's not 18. It's not 19 conversations because when you settle for 17 because it's close enough, you don't have the 18th conversation. The 18th conversation could have been a million dollar listing that you didn't get because you didn't make the call because you settled for 17 because it's close enough or because you told yourself I'll make it up tomorrow and you won't. Work is 20 conversations. It's not a goal. It's a standard. It's an activity that you hold yourself accountable to. Make care calls not sale calls. Lead every conversation with gratitude, bring contribution to every conversation and always focus on either getting an appointment, getting a referral or adding somebody to your database. Those are standards every day. 20 conversations, one appointment scheduled, add one person to your database, get a referral. Now today, find somebody who's interested in buying a home or selling a home, whether it's 30 days from now, six months from now, or a year from now, doesn't matter because there is no such thing as bad leads, just bad real estate agents who don't follow up. 
And when you meet with one person every single day, you're going to meet with 250 people over the next 50 weeks because you're going to take two weeks off. So over the next year, working five days a week, that means you have 250 people in your pipeline that you're going to follow up forever because you reject rejection. And no is not a word that lives in your vocabulary. No simply means not yet. And because you follow up forever, you're going to create new information. And people will never change their mind. But what they will do is make a new decision based on new information. And because you follow up forever, you're creating emotional proximity and you're going to be there when they change their mind because you provided them with new information, which is to hire you. Make it a great day. Thank you, John. My pleasure. Uh, thank thanks, you, John. John. Thanks, everybody. Have an thank amazing you. day. Thanks, John. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Super thank you, John. for this meeting. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, You're amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you. Thank you. I love you. <laughs> right back at you.